Good morning. It's Friday morning. Um, we're going to continue in John chapter 11, uh, where Jesus is going to raise Lazarus from the dead. And I'm going to share some things that maybe you haven't thought of before, but I found it really encouraging to me. Uh, yesterday, uh, my son has an apartment uh, not too far from where I am, my youngest son, Aaron. And he, the apartment came with a washer and dryer and he has this old one that he's had on the back porch in a closet for almost two years and so i went over there to help him to get rid of it and the way we decided to do it was to call goodwill and goodwill was going to come and pick it up well the problem with goodwill is they didn't want to take it he lives on a third floor they didn't want to bring it down from the third floor so we had to take it down but he can't leave the washer and dryer outside of his apartment complex because they don't allow for that. So they called me, Goodwill called me and said that they had a, uh, a schedule uh, pickup that had canceled. And if, we, if they could go over and pick up his washer and dryer, I said, sure. So I went over there right away and uh, we're, we're getting ready to pull it down. And they called back and said, oh, by the way, our... Our truck driver called in sick. He can't make it. So can we do it tomorrow? And I said, okay. So I'm over there. And just as I get there and we're getting ready to pull it down, they call me again. They said, oh, our truck is broken. We can't take it. Uh, can we reschedule? And I said, well, you've already rescheduled twice. I'm here ready to take it down. You know, at, we can't leave it outside. What do you want us to do? So I'm having a real hard time with them. And I decided, well, you know what I'm going to do? There's a goodwill not too far. They wouldn't, they don't allow you to deliver it, but they will come and pick it up. So I was going to go over there and, and ask them if they could uh, lend me a, a hand or a truck and I would just take it over there. So as I was getting ready to go, I went on downstairs. We had already taken the washer and dryer downstairs, which three flights of stores, uh, stairs, and it was really heavy, especially the washer. And uh, so as I was getting ready, to, I got in my car and I was getting ready to go. I noticed a guy in a truck who had a bunch of old appliances and metal. And as I was pulling out of the parking lot. So I drove over there real quick. I rolled down my window and I said, hey, can you use a washer and a dryer? And I got one right over here. He said, oh yes. And old Hispanic guy even had a lift on his truck. And I have no doubt in my mind that God orchestrated that. You know, for him to be right there Right at that moment, in our time of need, it may seem insignificant to other people, but to me, it was a tremendous uh, experience that I had in my son of God working things out in the littlest detail. So I'm really thankful for that. Today, we're going to get into Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Which is a greater miracle? Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead or a simple answered prayer to remove his washer and dryer? I want to encourage you today by what I'm going to share with you. Okay? How many times have you felt and you thought, God, you're not there. You don't hear my prayers. I keep praying the same thing over and over. It seems like I'm just talking to the air. Watch what I read to you today, okay? You remember, as we came up here, Martha and Mary, Lazarus has been dead for a number of days. He's already in a tomb. Uh, we saw yesterday that even though God is omniscient and he knows everything he still subjects himself to stay in the present and experience different things okay which is a tremendous uh encouragement to us because it 
exemplify how we can bring joy or grief to God moment by moment in our lives. Okay, so let me read this, just a few verses. Jesus is going to raise Lazarus from the dead. And uh, Mary and Martha had already uh, declared their faith in him and that he is the Christ and he is God. And there's all these other people around that had came from Judea, I mean from uh, Jerusalem, which is only a couple of miles from Bethany, where they are now at. Okay, so we're in verse 38. Jesus once more deeply moved. As you saw in the last one, Jesus wept. It wasn't the kind of weeping that the crowd there had. You know, they were, you know, loud, crying. If you've ever been to a funeral overseas, and I have, even when my grandfather died in Italy, uh, the, everybody's dressed in black. Uh, everybody stops and does the cross as the, as the car goes by, uh, you know, and people are just crying and wailing. In fact, I slept in the room with my grandfather in a casket because they, don't have, they didn't have a funeral home back then. Okay, at least not where we were. And, uh, but the people wailing and whining because they don't have any hope they're ever going to see him again. And so these people are there. Some of them are professional mourners. And others are truly people that are concerned for Mary and Martha and, and you, Lazarus. And so Jesus is deeply moved. And we saw in the shortest verse of the Bible, it says, and Jesus wept. Okay, so here we continue. Jesus once more deeply moved. Not screaming, crying, but just moved, shedding tears quietly. He came to the tomb, and it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. And right away, Martha begins to rebuke Jesus. And she raises up opposition to what Jesus said and taking away the stone. And she makes a logical observation. She says, uh, Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor. For he has been dead four days. If, if you've ever been around or come across a dead body, you know, they don't smell very good. Okay? Really bad. Okay? Nothing's more disgusting and foul smelling than a body, a human body that has been left out to die. Okay. There's no life in it and it's decayed and saturated with stench. And Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of God? So he's challenging her faith. She doesn't have any pre idea that Jesus is going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Nobody has done that before. Okay, this is the seventh miracle that Jesus is doing. And probably one of the greatest miracles that people have witnessed. And so they listened to Jesus, they took away the stone, then Jesus looked up and said this, and this is the message for this morning. Father, I thank you that you heard me. I knew that you always hear me. Now let's just stop there a minute. Even before he sees the result of the greatest miracle that has ever been performed in front of people, Jesus is already thanking God the Father. Okay, I've prayed many times, and I don't know how many times I have prayed, but not really thankful. Just kind of throwing it out there. But Jesus is in the will of God, and he knows that the only way that God isn't going to hear his prayers as it says in the Bible, if you regard iniquity in your heart, he will not hear you. It's not that he can't, except that he will not. But if you don't have any secret sin in your life, you don't have iniquity in your heart, you don't have any ulterior motive, you're just praying because you want to know and do God's will, 
He hears all your prayers. All of them. You know, and I read that, and I've read this passage many times, and I always get to the point where Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, and I focus on that. I hadn't really focused on that. But you see, I'm at a point of need, too, right now. I don't know where I'm going to go in four weeks. In fact, today, when I'm done with this, I might go looking. But I, even like that little incident where God put that person there to take my son's washer and dryer, I know that God is, has different angels and messengers and has provided uh, providential circumstances to guide me. And I know that. And I know that I can bring pleasure to God by saying right now, God, I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know where I'm going to stay. I got some ideas. I know what I would like to do. I, I think I know how I can make this a better teaching um, ministry. But God, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. And I thank you now for hearing my prayers. And then he says, I know that you always hear me. Not that you sometimes hear me, but Lord God, that you always hear me. Listen, wherever you're at today, whatever you're doing, whatever circumstances in your life, if you're honestly, sincerely wanting to please God and walk with him as you pray, he hears your prayers. Not only does he hear them, he's at this moment right now acting on them. Okay? Because he knows that you want to glorify him. And so and that's what Jesus said. He says, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. And that was the purpose of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead so that the people would know that Jesus was in fact the Christ and that he was sent from God. Then when he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come out. Uh, I think it was Dr. Ironside who said many years ago on speaking on this passage, it's a good thing he said, Lazarus, come out, because he had just said, come out, everybody in the graves would have come out. <laughs> but he specified Lazarus. Lazarus, come out. That demonstrated that Jesus had the power over death. And he was able to raise a dead person to life. And... At that point, the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to, to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Now, if, if you're wrapped like a mummy, you can't walk. <laughs> Unless you're doing, you know, like, you, you remember the, you're hopping in, like in one of those potato sacks? Lazarus didn't do it. Somehow miraculously appeared there at the opening of the entrance. And then Jesus said to him, loosen him. Loosen him up. Let him go. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. No matter where you're at right now, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is God. He's demonstrated this here. The, the reason that the book of the Gospel of John was written is to authenticate that Jesus is the Christ and believing in him, you may have eternal life. In fact, as we get towards the end of the book, he's going to say these things were written so that you may know that you have eternal life. Not that you may get us or you may doubt, but you may know. This Jesus who made that promise, raised Lazarus from the dead, will someday participate in the resurrection of all of us. And when he then gives us an immortal body, 
that is meant to live forever. This same Jesus wants to answer your prayers. It may be a small thing like yesterday, moving a washer and dryer. It may be where you're going to be next. It may be who you're going to be with next. It may be something for your children or adult children or your grandchildren. It may be about your work, your way of caring for yourself and your family. But one of the beautiful things about being a Christian is that we have a God that is not absent, but is intimately involved in every detail of our life. And nothing is so small or insignificant to him. And our God, who is omnipresent everywhere at the same time, has subject himself to enter into your journey with you and experience the joy of you having faith in him. As I'm going to trust God for what's going to happen, I can already thank God, thank you, Lord, that you hear me and that you have heard me. And now, Father God, guide me according to your will. Can you say that prayer today? Say it right now. And thank God for always hearing your prayers and for hearing your prayer at this moment. This is the God that raised Lazarus from the dead. God bless you all. Y'all have a great weekend.